and spinning around and apparently every time you get dizzy. If you find that interaction as surprising as I did, you might be wondering how to work around it. You also might be wondering what other things you need to keep an eye out for when working with rooms within Dynamo for Revit. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to fix that now. So up until recently, I had no idea that Revit rooms could exist without names or numbers. Actually, don't even think I ever thought to try it. Well, it is possible and it was causing some pretty big issues with some of these 3D room tag workflows that I've shared recently on this YouTube channel. They've done studies, you know, 60% of the time it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Thankfully, one of my users of the Revit plugin that I offer to create 3D room tags or 3D spatial tags did report it. So I'm glad to say that there is a fix in place for that tool. So if you do download that tool, it does work and it works around these rooms that don't have room names or numbers either or. Side note, if you want access to that Revit plugin, I'll link it below. It is a paid plugin, but I have a free version of that in the Dynamo package rhythm with all the source code, open source, and all that good stuff for you to use as well. But if you wanna check it out, the link is below. However, today we are going to look at how to work with these rooms and work around these rooms with Dynamo for Revit. So here we are, we are in Revit 2023 in the advanced sample model with a little bit more jacked up conditions. So I have a few rooms in here that are unplaced, unbounded, I have a few without numbers, a few without names, and a few without numbers and names. So we have a whole lot of not great conditions in here that we'll filter against in this video. If you want this specific version of this sample file, it is linked below as well. The data set for this whole lesson is linked below for you to be able to check out if you'd like to be able to follow along. So with that in mind, we'll go ahead and open up Dynamo for Revit, new blank workspace. And this isn't necessarily a full tutorial, so we'll work through a few things quickly, but I'll link you to other tutorials that cover some more of these concepts in more detail. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to collect all of our room elements. So we got our category, and we'll go ahead and collect all of those rooms. As you can see, we have 93 rooms in this specific version of the sample model. So that's 93 rooms. Dynamo doesn't care if they're good rooms or not. These can include unbounded rooms, unplaced rooms, rooms missing numbers or names or both. Dynamo doesn't care. It doesn't care what a good room is. But us, as human beings, we do care. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to filter out the unplaced and unbounded rooms. In order to do that, we're going to go ahead and navigate to our Revit category, our element subcategory, and the room subcategory. Within here, we have all of the different interactions for our rooms within Revit. In this case, we can use a node called area, and we need to check if the room has an area. Whenever a room is unplaced or unbounded, it has an area of zero. So that's one really easy way to filter those rooms out. And for the longest time, this was the only way that I thought we had to filter out rooms until this user brought up the issue with unnamed rooms or unnumbered rooms. In addition to this, we have access to name and number. We'll go ahead and place these nodes now just to have them staged for us to use a little bit later on. So as we can see, this takes a room as an input. If we hover, we can start to notice that we should have some zeros in here within this list. That represents unplaced or unbounded rooms for us to be able to filter out. In this case, we need to make sure that the rooms are greater than the number zero. So we can search for a greater than node. And a really quick way to enter a number is to double click for a code block, kind of a scary name, but if you enter a number, it will turn blue and we have a number element in here. And now we get a list of true and false values. This is known as a Boolean list or Boolean mask. This is useful because we can use this node with another node called filter by Boolean mask. So we'll go ahead and do is we'll do filter by bool mask. And if this node scares you a little bit, don't worry about it. I'll link below a video that I did previously dissecting this node, explaining how it works in a visual way. This node's kind of scary on the surface, but it's one of the most useful nodes that you will use within Dynamo. The mask would be this Boolean mask that's an output. So mask is a weird word for a list of Boolean values, true and false. And the list that we want to filter is the original list from back here where we collected our rooms. So at this point on this filter by Boolean mask, our in output 
are our good rooms at this point. So the rooms that are placed and bounded, the out output are rooms that are unplaced or unbounded. So those aren't going to work for 3D room tag workflows or for a whole lot else as well. At this point, if you wanted to clean those out of your model, you could delete those if you really wanted. You'd have to do some further checks just to make sure they're not getting used for something, but you could start to clean up your Revit models in this way. So what we could go ahead and do is I'll place a node called watch just to be able to take a look at what's going on here. We're going to say rooms that are placed and bounded. Just so that way we know at this point in are the good rooms that we're working with. So that's a really good way just to kind of indicate to your end user what's going on with this graph. So that's where we'll leave that for now. And next we want to filter out rooms that don't have a name. Keep in mind, we are doing a bit of a daisy chaining interaction with this workflow to where we're doing filter, filter, filter. In a future video, I'm going to cover how to convert this graph to be one filter. It's a bit more intermediate or advanced. So that's why we'll save it for another video. So what we can do is we can actually take our room elements in Revit. Whenever we have an element within Dynamo for Revit, it has a green element ID with a highlight. Very quickly, we can see that we have a whole bunch of room names and some of these are blank. So those are ones that will not work for 3D room tags because I need a name and number to create the 3D room tag. So we need to filter those now. So let's go ahead and zoom out and get this position on the screen here. And what we need to do now is we need to check some equal values. So in Dynamo, there's a whole lot of logic in here as well that we have access to. So under math and functions, we should have access to some equal nodes. It's under operators and greater than we, we use that earlier as well. And we have access to a not equal. So these are all the operators that we can use to see if things are equal or not. They are useful for mathematical operations, but we can use them for comparisons as well. In this case, we have an equal equal, which means is equal. And we have an exclamation equal, which means does not equal. That's the one we're going to use in this case. What we want to do is make sure that the room name is not blank, is not a blank value. The easiest way to do this is to double click for another code block. And we'll do a start quote and an end quote. And all that does is generate a very blank string that's nothing. So we can go in and do is plug that into the Y. And now we have a true false list, also known as a Boolean mask, as an output for us to be able to use. In this case, filtering by room name is done. But all we need to do is copy this previous filter by Boolean mask to reuse it. You can, of course, place another one. But if we hold down control on our keyboard, we can do a very quick copy. At this point, we want to filter out the rooms that we had already filtered that are placed. And our mask is our newly created mask regarding the room names. And in this case, we'll see that we have all of the ones on our in, and we should have a few on our out as well. Those are unnamed rooms at this point. So that's something that we've already started to filter out. So now we'll rename this watch node rooms with a name. Awesome. And we'll collapse these previews and all that good stuff. For room numbers, it's going to be pretty much exactly the same as the room name filtering. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to copy these three nodes with a control on our keyboard copy. Our rooms are the rooms with a name that we need to now filter. And we want to verify the room number. So what we can actually do is we'll connect room to there. We'll make sure that it does not equal this blank string. So we reuse that blank string as well, which is really great because that blank string can change if we wanted to. So that's connected to two nodes now, which is really useful. And now we have another list with a few rooms that did not have a number. In this case, it's just one, but this list could vary depending on your model. And now we'll say rooms with an area or rooms that are placed, placed, bounded, and have a name and number. So we filtered that down a ton, which is really nice. So we can kind of preview this list and you'll see that we have a total of 84 when all is said and done. At the beginning, we had 93. So we had a total of nine rooms in here that just didn't work for us. So from here, you can go ahead and use these rooms as inputs for your 3D room tag creation or for other computational stuff within Dynamo. Uh, do me a favor, comment below if the ability to remove a room's name and number was news to you as well. 
It definitely caught me by surprise and I just kind of want to know that I'm not alone. I never thought to try it and it just kind of blew my mind. So let me know below if you're in that same boat. I know what's right, but I'm not going to say because you're all jerks who didn't come see my band last night. Do you really know which one is correct? I don't know. So I hope that helps out. Considerations when working with rooms within Dynamo for Revit. In the next video will compress this workflow down quite a bit. As a reminder, the sample files are linked below and we'll see you in the next one.